What's going on YouTube? This is Virgil N with another video for you. Uh, with baseball season coming right around the corner, I thought it would be best to do a baseball jersey and start it off with my home city, the Toronto Blue Jays. So, uh, hometown fitters, this one's for you and to all the Toronto fans out there, all the Canadian baseball fans out there, and um, to all the uh, Puerto Rico fans out there who had a, uh, who had a pretty good uh, run at the World Baseball Classic. Uh, this month, so sit back, relax, and let's check it out. This is my Toronto Blue Jays jersey. Um, it's a Cooperstown Majestic replica, and uh, I bought it as a blank and got it customized to one of my favorite players growing up, Roberto Alomar. Um, I was kind of on the fence as to who I wanted on the back of this uniform. Um, it was either going to be Alomar or Pat Engen, but I went with Alomar. I kind of flipped a coin and it landed on, uh, on Alomar's side, so that's who I went with. Um, this isn't exactly the authentic, but it's a lot better than the replicas that they produce today. Getting into the detail, I gotta clean this jersey actually, I've got some stains on it, but getting into some detail. Um, you got the Blue Jays in two layer wool felt lettering that's stitched into the jersey. Um, you got this Blue Jays logo, the classic logo that they used back in 1992. These uh, powder blue and uh, royal blue stripes on the sleeves. And on the back in single layer tackle twill, you have Alomar stitched on the, on the back. And the number 12. This looks like it's just two strips of blue stitched onto the back. But really, if you look at it up close, it's actually like a white piece and, uh, and two strips stitched on the outside. So it's actually two layer tackle twill on the number 12. And this is the, uh, the tag at the bottom corner that says Cooperstown Collection Majestic. Now, the, this is a pretty like interesting piece because when it came out, when it first came out, it was like all stitched up and wool felt and looked really nice and everything. Then later on in a couple of months, they kind of switched over to the, you know, like the, the screen printed patches. It's like not even double, double layered. It's like, it's like a patch with just like color painted on it or something. So it was like that and the logo was all screened and, and when I saw that, I immediately knew that these ones here they won't be available anymore, so um, I grabbed one as fast as I could, and then about a week later, they were all sold out, and they replaced them with the with that the newer replica versions. And you can always tell if you want to buy the good quality ones if you go on eBay or something. You should always look for this particular tag, the navy blue one with the two logos. That's how you know you're going to get a proper um, jersey with a better quality, and it's not going to not going to wash off or anything, which is kind of which is kind of lame because um, the quality is a lot lower, but the price still stay the same. So that's what's kind of that's what kind of bummed me out about it. But anyways, I was happy to pick this one up, and I was glad to get Roberto Alomar. He uh, he hit that that world uh, that one home run that got us to the World Series back in 1992 against uh, Eckersley, and uh, he had a pretty stellar career. I wore this jersey at the game when they retired his number against the Texas Rangers and uh, he did an autograph signing and when he did the signing I sent out the jersey and I couldn't get it back so I got a photo anyways I'll show that some other time but um, yeah all in all a pretty sweet jersey and uh, to add to this I have the uh, white and blue Blue Jays cap now people think that this is the um, this is the Cooperstown version, you know, with the the wool that says Cooperstown on it. But this is actually the um, the on-field authentic that the team wore back in two thousand and eight for the uh, the Flashback Fridays edition of the Flashback Fridays games, where they wore the powder blue pullover jerseys and they had these on field. And whatever they sell on the field is what they sell at the store. So I picked it up, and um, turns out they don't make these anymore. So. Um, Pretty happy about it now. It's just the Cooperstown version. Um, this is the uh, MLB logo on the back. It's actually 3D embroidered. And um, 
you have the authentic tagging on the inside. At the time, back in 2008, um, the Blue Jays were the only team that had the white panels on the front. And uh, I think in the next season or, or two seasons later, the Baltimore Orioles uh, did so. But this was the first time that the white panels did come back and the Blue Jays were able to do it. And this logo here, this classic logo, has the second most stitch count on, uh, on any new era baseball cap. So that's kind of, that's kind of neat. It goes really well together. Um, I love it a lot, and uh, it's like probably one of the one of the best ways how I can represent my favorite player or one of my favorite players growing up. I think if you were to get a blank a blank 1992 or 93 Toronto Blue Jays jersey, and you want to customize it, I think any player from any of those two rosters is appropriate. You know, you got like. Paul Molitor, Pat Borders, Kelly Gruber, uh, Dave Winfield, Juan Guzman, uh, Joe Carter, Jack Morris, John Hallerud, uh Candy Maldonado. You know, it just goes on and on and on because there was such a good team back in 1992 and 93. So, um, I don't know, Alomar was just, just one of those players that I really admired growing up. So, um, I went with his, with his name, name and number. So, that's going to do it for my jersey video. Um, hope you guys liked it. Please let me know what you think. Comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, check me out on my blog and uh, go Jays go. Till next time YouTube, take care.